Hey guys, so after a long time, like really, really long time, I am back with an Honor smartphone review. Now, uh, you might already know that Honor, being a sub-brand of Huawei, also faced the consequences of the Huawei US ban back in 2019. This uh, dramatic move from the United States was kind of like the Thanos snap wiping both Huawei and Honor from using products and services from all US-owned companies, including Google. But since the ban was only on Huawei, it could technically save Honor by selling it to other companies, which means Honor would function as a completely separate entity. And to no one's surprise, Huawei sold Honor to a Chinese company back in 2020. This, hence, allowed Honor to regain access to services from Google and other US-based companies. Since then, Honor has been back in the smartphone industry and has been making waves with a range of budget, mid-range and flagship products, including foldables. In fact, it was quick enough to regain a 15% market share in China in the third quarter of 2021. And um, in the first and second quarter of 2022, it even became the number one smartphone brand with a 20% market share in China. Now, besides China, Honor has been expanding its business globally as well. And today, I have the company's first global launch for 2023, the Honor X9A, which I have been using for a couple of days now. It's a mid-range phone that recently launched in Malaysia for 1500 Malaysian Ringgit for the single 8256GB variant. That roughly converts to around 340 US dollars or 28,000 Indian rupees. Okay, the first thing I'd really like to talk about the Honor X9A is its display. Realme recently delivered a stunning curved display in the mid-range segment with the 10 Pro Plus and we get a similar experience here as it also comes with curved sides that look and feel incredibly premium. And it's uh, not a steep bend, 45 degrees to be precise, so I haven't had any problems with accidental touches of any kind here. But as premium as it looks, curved sides always pose a risk of damage due to the additional stress on the edges. And to address this, Honor is using what it calls deeply reinforced glass on the Honor X9A, which is set to increase the toughness and rigidity of the screen. Besides this, the Honor X9A has also secured a bunch of uh, standard durability tests, such as the marble drop and steel ball impact. So screen durability should not be an issue with this guy. Okay, moving on, the AMOLED panel here comes with a full HD plus resolution, a 120Hz refresh rate and a 10-bit color gamut. So the overall quality of this panel is nice and the colors and contrast here are pretty good too. And uh, the bezels around the display are also quite minimal, so you will have a great time binging movies and shows. The phone also has Wideband L1 certification for full HD streaming on OTT platforms. Speaking of which, I recently finished binging the entire Wednesday series on this phone and I was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was on my eyes at night. This was mostly thanks to the 1920Hz PWM dimming, which basically reduces the screen flickering issue in low lighting situations, hence less strain on the eyes. However, given how good this screen is, Honor should have provided a good quality stereo speaker here. Not that its single speaker is not loud or clear or anything like that, but as a 2023 mid-range smartphone, I think Honor should not have compromised on this aspect. Likewise, I am not satisfied with its haptics either. Instead of a subtle and precise feedback, you feel a buzz when you press a key. Uh, to compare, I recently reviewed the Redmi Note 12 Pro and the Realme 10 Pro Plus, which offer much better haptic response. Okay, design-wise, the Honor X9A looks a bit more unique than other smartphones currently available in the market, especially because of this circular camera ring on the back. Actually, this reminds me of Huawei's premium Mate series smartphones. Personally, I like it because it looks good and it's still a unique enough design to differentiate itself from the rest of the crowd. Thankfully, Honor has offered a matte finish on the back, so there is no need to worry about fingerprints and such. Also, it has a glittery finish to it, which I think goes well with the emerald green shade that I have with me. And uh, not to mention, the phone itself is actually really compact, lightweight and sleek. And with the curved edges on the back and front, it feels very comfortable to hold in the hand. 
The only flaw with this design is that dirt gets easily accumulated around this camera module even when you use a cover, so I've had to clean it up every now and then. Getting to performance, this is one area where I think Honor could have done a lot better. It comes with the Snapdragon 695 chipset, which as you might know is a chipset from last year and it's often found on phones under $300. Although this chipset is more than enough to handle your day-to-day -day task fairly well, um, I think for the price, Honor should have gone with some newer processors like the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 or the Diamond City 1080, which would have offered better app opening time and good performance even after a year or two. Plus, right now, don't expect this chip to give you an edge in terms of gaming too. Here, you are only able to enjoy popular games like PUBG Mobile and Apex Legends in medium settings and get around 40 to 50 FPS. There are also a few things I would like to share about its software. Although I appreciate how stably it has performed throughout my usage and there are no crappy bloatware apps um, here to deal with, Honor's Magic UI still lacks a few convenience-focused features like QR scanning for Wi-Fi or long pressing on the home screen to access app widgets. And um, I think Magic UI's interface as a whole could be improved significantly as well. You might also be surprised to find out that it still runs on Android 12 for some reason, and uh, Honor has not even specified any number of guaranteed software updates for the X9a. So yeah, there is still a lot of work to be done in terms of the software. On a positive note, I am particularly impressed by Honor in the battery department. Just look at this thing. It's just 7.9 millimeters thick and weighs only 175 grams, but has a solid 5100 milliamp hour unit, which consistently gave me about seven to eight hours of uh, screen on time. Its standby time is also quite good with just a two to three percent of overnight battery drain. As for charging, you get a 40 watt adapter inside the box, which takes uh, less than an hour to fully juice up this battery. Okay, let's talk about the cameras now. Here you get a triple camera setup at the back with a 64 megapixel primary, a low res 5 megapixel ultra wide, and a useless 2 megapixel macro sensor. For selfies, there's a 16 megapixel camera on the front. As always, I took a lot of photos with this smartphone and what I can say, especially after just reviewing the Note 12 Pro and using the Realme 10 Pro Plus as my primary phone, Honor still has a long way to go in terms of optimizing its cameras and maybe providing better camera sensors. The photos from the main 64 megapixel camera are usable for the most part, but what Honor X9A disappointed me the most was in two areas. First, I don't understand why they included a 5 megapixel ultra wide lens in a premium mid range phone. And second, you can only record in ATP 30 FPS footage from both the front and rear camera. There is no OIS stabilization, and Honor has not even offered an option to electronically stabilize the video. So with everything considered, I really don't understand what's Honor up to with this phone. I really like the design. It's really good. The curved display on a mid-range smartphone is also nice to have. Um, it has a good battery backup and I can live with its UI too. But compromising on very important aspects like performance, cameras and stereo speakers does not make me feel like the good old Honor is back. I remember Honor used to offer incredible mid-range smartphones back in the day like the Honor Play with an aluminum back, powerful Kirin 970 chip and 4K recording capable camera all at a pretty reasonable price. So I really wish the company could bring back that legacy instead. But at the moment, I believe Honor still needs to uh, progress even further, be it in terms of software or hardware to match up with its fellow brands. For what Honor is asking for this phone, um, I think you should consider the Redmi Note 12 Pro or Pro Plus, both of which uh, have OIS cameras, a much better processor and a stereo speaker setup. And if you prefer a smartphone with a curved display, the Realme 10 Pro Plus is also a better option. So guys, that was all for my review of the all new Honor X9a. What are your thoughts on this device? Do let me know in the comments. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.